Section 13 of Black Experience in America, 18th to 20th Century. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Title by author. Recording by Buddha. Black Experience in America, 18th to 20th Century. By Various. Section 13. Sketches of the Black Baptist Church at Savannah, in Georgia, and of their minister Andrew Bryan, extracted from several letters. From the Journal of Negro History, Volume 1, January 1916. Author, Various. Release date, October 5, 2004. E-book, number 13642. Savannah, July 19, 1790, etc. Dear Brother, with pleasure I receive your favor of the 20th Ultimo, more particularly, as I trust the correspondence may be of use to Brother Andrew's church, concerning the origin of which I have taken from him the following account. Our Brother Andrew was one of the black hearers of George Lyle, of whom an account was given before, and was hopefully converted by his preaching from chapter 3 of St. John's Gospel, and a clause of verse 7, Ye must be born again. Prior to the departure of George Lyle for Jamaica, he came up from Tybee River, where departing vessels frequently lay ready for sea, and baptized our brother Andrew, with a wench of the name Hagar, both belonging to Jonathan Bryan, Esquire. These were the last performances of our brother George Lyle in this quarter. About eight or nine months after his departure, Andrew began to exhort his black hearers with a few whites, Edward Davis Esquire indulged him and his hearers to erect a rough building on his land at Yamacraw in the suburbs of Savannah for a place of worship, of which they have been very artfully dispossessed. In this their beginning of worship, they had frequent interruptions from the whites, as it was at a time that a number of blacks had absconded, and some had been taken away by the British. This was a plausible excuse for their wickedness in their interruptions. The whites grew more and more inveterate, taking numbers of them before magistrates. They were imprisoned and whipped. Samson, a brother of Andrew, belonging to the same master, was convicted about a year after him, and continued with him in all their persecutions, and does until now. These, with many others, were twice imprisoned, and about fifty were severely whipped, particularly Andrew who was cut and bled abundantly while he was under their lashes. Brother Hamilton says, He held up his hand and told his persecutors that he rejoiced not only to be whipped, but would freely suffer death for the cause of Jesus Christ. The Chief Justice Henry Osborne Esquire, James Habersham Esquire, and David Montague Esquire were their examinants, and released them. Their kind master also interceded for them, and was much affected and grieved at their punishment. Brother Hamilton was also an advocate for them, and further says that at one of their examinations, George Walton Esquire spoke freely in favor of the sufferers, saying that such treatment would be condemned even among barbarians. The Chief Justice Osborne then gave them liberty to continue their worship between sunrising and sunset, and their indulgent master told the magistrate that he would give them the liberty of his own house or his barn at a place called Brampton, about three miles from town, and that they should not be interrupted in their worship. In consequence hereof, they made use of their master's barn, where they had a number of hearers, with little or no interruption, for about two years. During the time of worship at Brampton, Brother Thomas Burton, an elderly Baptist preacher, paid them a visit, examined and baptized about 18 blacks. At another period, while there, they received a visit from our brother Abraham Marshall, who examined and baptized about 40 and gave them two certificates under his hand, copies of which follow. This is to certify that upon examination into the experiences and characters of a number of Ethiopians and adjacent to Savannah, it appears that God has brought them out of darkness into the light of the gospel and given them fellowship one with another. Believing it is the will of Christ, we have constituted them a church of Jesus Christ, 
to keep up his worship and ordinances. Signed, A. Marshall, VDM. January 19th, 1788. This is to certify that the Ethiopian Church of Jesus Christ at Savannah have called their beloved Andrew to the work of the ministry. We have examined into his qualifications and believing it to be the will of the great head of the church, we have appointed him to preach the gospel and to administer the ordinances, as God in his providence may call. Signed, A. Marshall, VDM. January 20th, 1788. After the death of their master, his son, Dr. William Bryan, generously continued them the use of the barn for worship until the estate was divided among the family. Our brother Andrew, by consent of parties, purchased his freedom, bought a lot at Yamacraw, and built a residence near the dwelling house which their master had given Samson liberty to build on his lot, and which have ever been made use of for worship. But by the division of their master's estate, the lot wherein Samson had built a house to live in, and which until this time continues to be used for worship by Andrew, fell into the hands of an attorney who married a daughter of the deceased Mr. Bryan, and received no less than twelve pounds a year for it. Samson serves as a clerk, but frequently exhorts in the absence of his brother, who has appointments in different places to worship. Brother Andrew's account of his number in full communion is 225, and about 350 have been received as converted followers, many of whom have not permission from their owners to be baptized. The whole number is judged to be about 575, from the towns being taken to this present July. I have consulted Brother Hamilton, who thinks they have need of a few Bibles, the Baptist Confession of Faith, the Catechism, Wilson on Baptism, some of Brian's works, or any other that your wisdom may think useful to an illiterate people. They all join in prayer for you and yours and beg your intercession at the throne of grace for them, as well as for the small number of whites that dwell there, and among them I hope you will not forget your poor unworthy brother, and believe me, with sincere affections and brotherly love, you're in the bonds of the gospel. Signed, Jonathan Clark. Concerning the church at Savannah, the late Reverend Mr. Joseph Cook of the Uhaw, Upper Indian Land, thus writes, From the enclosed you will see how it became a church, and what they have suffered, which is extremely affecting. But they now begin to rise from obscurity and to appear great. I have some acquaintance with their pastor, and have heard him preach. His gifts are small, but he is clear in the grand doctrines of the gospel. I believe him to be truly pious, and he has been the instrument of doing more good among the poor slaves than all the learned doctors in America. The friends of our adorable Redeemer will, no doubt, rejoice to find that this large body of Christian Negroes, under the patronage of some of the most respectable persons in their city, have opened a subscription for the erecting of a place of worship in the city of Savannah. For the Society of Black People of the Baptist denomination, the property to be vested in the hands of seven or more persons in trust for the church and congregation. Their case is sent to England, recommended by J. Johnson, Minister of the Union Church, John Hamilton, Ebenezer Hills, Joseph Watts, D. Moses Vallotton, John Milleen, Abraham Leggett. Since the preceding account has been in the press, other letters have been received, of which the following is an extract. Kingston, Jamaica, May 18, 1792. Reverend and dear sir, in answer to yours, I wrote December 18 last, and as I have not received a line from you since, I send this, not knowing but the other was miscarried. Mr. Green has called upon me, and very kindly offered his service to deliver a letter from me into your hands. He also advised me to send you a copy of our church covenant, which I have done, being a collection of some of the principal texts of scripture which we observe, both in America and this country, for the direction of our practice. 
It is read once a month here on sacrament meetings that our members may examine if they live according to all those laws which they profess, covenanted, and agreed to. By this means, our church is kept in scriptural subjection. As I observe in my last, the chiefest part of our society are poor, illiterate slaves, some living on sugar estates, some on mountains, pens, and other settlements that have no learning, no not to know so much as a letter in the book, but the reading this covenant once a month, when all are met together from the different parts of the island, keeps them in mind of the commandments of God, and by shewing the same to the gentlemen of the legislature and the justices and magistrates. When I applied for a sanction, it gave them general satisfaction, and wherever a Negro servant is to be admitted, their owners, after the pursual of it, are better satisfied. We are this day raising the roof on the walls of our meeting house. The height of the walls from the foundation is 17 feet. I have a right to praise God and glorify Him for the manifold blessings I have received and do still receive from Him. I have full liberty from Spanish Town, the capital of this country, to preach the gospel throughout the island. The Lord is blessing the work everywhere and believers are added daily to the church. My tongue is not able to express the goodness of the Lord. As our meeting house is out of town, about a mile and a half, I have a steeple on it, to have a bell to give notice to our people and more particularly to the owners of slaves that are in our society, that they may know the hour on which we meet and be satisfied that our servants return in due time, for which reason I shall be greatly obliged to you to send me out as soon as possible, a bell that can be heard about two miles distance with the price. I have one at present, but it is rather small. The slaves may then be permitted to come and return in due time, for at present we meet very irregular in respect to ours. I remain, with the utmost regards, love and esteem, Reverend Sir, yours, etc. George Lyle Copy of a recommendatory letter of Hannah Williams, a Negro woman in London. It is all in print, except for the part of which now appears in italics. Kingston, Jamaica. We that are of the Baptist religion, being separated from all churches, excepting that they are of the same faith and order after Jesus Christ, according to the Scriptures, do certify that our beloved sister Hannah Williams, during the time she was a member of the church at Savannah, until the evacuation, did walk as a faithful, well-behaved Christian, and to recommend her to join any church of the same faith and order, given under my hand this 21st day of December, in the year of our Lord, 1791, George Lyle, Baptist Annual Register, 1790-1793, to 1793, pages 339-344. End of section 13. Recording by Buddha. End of Black Experience in America, 18th to 20th century, by Various.